things. Uh, first of all, I want to make sure I express my gratitude to all the people that came out and watched this play today, um, especially all the little kids that were in that tunnel walk or around. You know, I taught our players in there. Like you never, you know, kids, uh, you never know what they're going through, dealing with, how many times they have a chance to come see us. We don't know their situation, so I was really proud of our guys to see them uh, dap kids up, sign autographs, go around, shake people's hands. So proud of our guys for that, but really grateful to all the people that came and watched us play. It wasn't the warmest day, as I think you guys all know. It might have been warm in the box, but it wasn't warm on the field. And um, But just uh, thinks, I think it speaks volumes about our team. Uh, and then the second thing, my only second takeaway was, you know, um, I think uh, – these guys have done everything I've asked them to do. They've gotten better and better and better. They like to play football, even down to the very end. You know, you know, trying to go down and score, giving Chubba those reps. No one's looking at me. No one's complaining. They like to compete. I think this summer is so crucial to our team. Um, the ability to focus for three hours. You know, we saw some lulls in there with the ball on the ground and all that. And that's that's really the next step when you have the ability to focus for three and a half hours straight. But uh, I like the progress we've made so far. So with that, I'll see what you guys have. Just your pace summary of, of how you executed today. Uh, I, I can't. I, mean, I have to. I have so much film to watch. You know, what I'm saying that when I'm out there, it's so hard for me. Like, if we hit a, if we hit a big play, I'm upset with the defense. You know, the offense scores, the crowd's cheering, and I'm over there like, what the heck's wrong with us? You know, on defense, I thought, I thought we ran the ball well at times with the first group. Um, you know, we tried to put a lot of different things on tape. Um, I was had, you know, I was disappointed we couldn't push the ball through the red zone early. Um, you know, but the, you know the, the turnovers and the balls on the ground bothered me. Obviously, uh, you know we had some missed tackles, but it didn't look like you know didn't, the tackling didn't look atrocious. I thought the quarterbacks did a nice job um, moving the ball. Uh, ran a little bit of the option game early, um, so I thought there were some good things there. You know, I thought the you know the kicking game, Timmy, not, you know not knocked that big one through early, but you know obviously that left something to be desired later. We missed a couple kicks, um, so there's, there's probably a lot to work on. You know, live on both sides, but uh, I'll, I'll have to get really granular with it as I watch it. Oper if you, you look at Sims in terms of operation, operating the offense, just getting everybody lined up, how did that look to you? That was good. You know, I mean, sometimes, uh, um, you know, when you split guys up, you know, guys sometimes have to play in a separate wide receiver position. So there was once or twice it looked like we, you know, we struggled, like guy had to get lined up for motion. But I thought the motions, the checks, you know, um, I thought all that. I, I, I didn't hear it. I didn't see any bad checks that were out there. Um, so I, I thought, you know, Jeff's really cool, calm out there. I like I like his demeanor and feel. He's played a lot of football, so I thought he I thought he looked pretty good. Is that the Sims you had seen all spring? And it's, I just feel like he threw ball. Um, you know, I, I can't tell you the the final numbers. Nine of thirteen. Um, I thought I thought I thought it looked like it was on time. I thought it looked like it. You know, he, he's a passer. He's a passer who runs four four. He's not a runner who throws. You know, he's a passer, and. Um, uh, you know, I think he did some things with his legs, extending plays, you know, had dead to rights on the one he spun out. So uh, that's really what we're looking for from him. Um, weren't able to get the big explosive, you know, play maybe that we wanted, but uh, I'll hit the, uh, hit, hit, the glance to, um, hit the glance to Marcus, which was really good. So I, I thought, you know, when I stand out there, I, I only stand out there just to sort of see what it feels like, you know, because I don't want to get that opportunity. And um, I thought it felt pretty good when he was out there. Was it to see some of the newcomers like Hamlin, Hart, Princewell, Maverick? They were making plays and kind of cap off their spring that way. Yeah, I mean Cam and uh, Princewell, uh, Maverick, you know they, they they play like older players. You know you bring those guys in, especially the positions. I mean, Cam has this unique ability like his his hands and feet don't stop, and so he's he's able to push pockets and, and get pressure on the quarterback. Uh, Princewell has unique ability to you know get off of blocks. He's really great with his hands, and Maverick's been so versatile. So. The whole spring they've kind of fit in, and they've you know they've gone with the ones, they've gone with the twos, they played different positions. Uh, there's not a, there's there's no entitlement. They're really tough team guys. So uh, I think the future is really really bright. You know, um, you know you look on defense. You know some guys who played a lot of football last year weren't out there, and to have all those guys you know those young players out there playing and, and doing some good things. You know was, was great all the way to the very last play when Gage picked the ball off. The guys that you can see playing. Like right away as freshmen. And just yeah, I don't think there's any reason not to. I mean, I think there's you know there's a lot there's a lot of uh, time left. You know, there's a lot that has to happen. You know, for me, everything goes in stages. You know, I I talked about in the winter earning the right to go to spring ball. During spring ball, I talk about earning the right to 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 be excited about the spring game. And so we have a lot of work to do this summer. Really, really the spring finishing school up. You know, we have several weeks left of school, but um, I would see no reason why those guys wouldn't be fighting to start play any any and all of the above and. As I said, you know, especially up front on the defensive line, we're going to play um, 
we're going to play two, you know, two hockey lines if we could, if not three, keep guys fresh. We have a lot of young talent. You mentioned ball security and, and fumbles last, last Saturday after the scrimmage. <coughs> Was that similar to what you saw today? And, and, you know, how do you view some of those turnovers? Because obviously the defense is, is doing something to help create them. Yeah, you know, I, I, to me on offense, there's no excuse for fumbles. There's no excuse. I, I can live with an interception here or there. And it will result in you not playing, to be quite honest. Now, we're not, you know, we're not here to play in fear. You know, it's not you know, one time and you're done. But you have to have the ability to protect the football. And um, um, it looked like, you know, I looked up on the Jumbotron because they kept going over to review them. And I think one of them, you know, the gentleman said to me, like, hey, had we reviewed that, it would have been incomplete. The one on Har Harbor that was a touchdown, it was an incomplete pass. But, I, you know, I knew we were going to play a lot of plays today, and I didn't want to be out there for four hours. We went through instant replays. So I just said, hey, let's play, with, play it like it's 1985, and you're making the call. So, um, but, so, you know, we can't have those fumbles, but I love the fact that they got their hands on the ball. That's really, really important to me. I mean, if we can take the ball away. We, and what I talked about at halftime, and, you know, Gabe can tell you. You in a good mood or what? All right, good. Um, well, Gabe, Gabe can tell you, I talked about to the defense, like, hey, the, the, the red defense, you know, you're, it's not that you're playing badly. Um, it's just that they keep starting with the ball on the 30-yard line because your offense keeps turning the ball over. So I'm trying to, you know, always talk about situational football and complementary football. People say that, but you, that's what happened. Um, the fumbled snaps and all that, it's, uh, you know, I'd have to go back and look at it. You know, we're rotating a lot of guys through there, but we don't make excuses. That, that just can't happen. And, you know, if it weren't for 66,000 people, I would have thrown my headset on and sat in a normal Saturday because that was really frustrating to me. But... You know what? It's also important that our guys learn to keep their composure and play through it. And um, uh, you know, we kind of we kind of fixed it and moved on. Frank Solich after that first play, what was it like having him here today? Um, you know, I, I, so my wife did like an event last night for the moms, all the moms of the players on the team. And um, halfway through it, I got a text from coach. And he was like, "Hey, Matt, I'd love it if you, you and Julie came upstairs um, to the event that he was having. He had former players there." And that was um, that was special to be a part of. I don't know how you know, I don't know how I got to be a part of it, but it was special to be a part of. And it was really special because, at the end of the day, you know, we all come and go as coaches, but you know, the impact he's had on his players was really, really important for me to be reminded of and to see. And so, um, I'm just really, really grateful for him as a man and as a person and as a coach. He's someone I've always looked up to, but he's been so kind to me. And so, um, you know, to hand the ball off to the fullback to first play and. Uh, uh, be able to uh, hand the ball to him. Um, you know, that's that's kind of a bucket list item for me. How do you, how do you feel about Janire and Bonner in that in that spot? Obviously, he's kind of a hybrid guy for you, but can he be a fullback? Yes. Yeah. 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 I, think, you know, I think the thing with modern football, not that you know it wasn't before, but just the thing with modern football is like having guys like I, I, brought, I sometimes talk about Juicek and those guys, like guys who can do multiple things. You know. They think you're in, you know. They think you're in 21 personnel, but you're really in 11. You know, Janiron can play all every position off there for us right now, and I think he has a real chance, depending on how he continues to develop. You know, I was, I was talking to Coach yesterday. Um, he was going through the weights of the the fullback. Sometimes they were, you know, sometimes they were 218 to 222, and then sometimes they got some, you know, 240 pound guys. And we got some guys. You know, we got Clover and Ruth and those guys who can go block the ISOs and the powers. But Janiron gives us a guy who can run it and. We're still running power with him and ISO with him, and he's put, he goes in there and then he runs option routes on third down. So he's he's really a, a weapon, I believe. A couple more. Coach, what, what are you most pleased with, and not just today, but for the spring in general? What you, what's the big takeaway? What are you most happy with? Uh, well, I'm I'm, um, I'm grateful to the, to the players for the, how hard they've they've tried to buy into what we're asking them to do. This will be so much easier for them next year. Like they they like every day is hard for them because. Um, it's hard for the new coaches because everything's so new. You know, when I say like, "Hey, we're gonna, we're gonna do this drill," it's like they don't even know what the drill is. Next year, they'll know what to expect. You know, they'll know we're gonna go into you know lights. And I've said that a couple times, but even you know, we're flipping guys from white to red. Um, you know, at the end, I said, "Hey, you guys want to take a knee?" And the offensive guys were like, "Absolutely not." You know, so it didn't really make sense what we were doing. And um, but you know, we were just trying to get. I mean, I thought Chuba played really, did some really good things out there, and I wanted to give him a chance in the two minutes to go down and move us and. He got us right down, you know, to the opportunity to do so. So, I just really appreciate um, that part about them, and the, you know, they're they're just going to get better and better and better. Was there a uh, fake punt plan, or what was it? No. So, <laughs> and that's first of all, me. It's not Brian. You know that you're, you're trying to because you're not going offense versus defense. The danger of going red versus white, and you start turning the ball over is like this side has 50 snaps and this side has 30. So I desperately was trying to get the white. Uh, the white defense and the 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 the, the red offense the red offense excuse me I was trying to get them more plays and so 
I was like, I was like, can you throw a sideline warning? And I didn't want to. I wanted to play the game, so I said to Buscini, I said, Hey, bro, if they all cover, just pull the ball down and run. And so he's got a great arm. Let me say this, uh, but uh, they didn't work out. But I was just trying to get a first down to keep him on the field, just to keep the reps even. You know, I want want to have the integrity of the game. Um, and I went for it on fourth down a couple times. So just trying to get those guys more reps, and we were able at the end to kind of balance the reps out and get it to where hopefully everyone got enough reps to, to evaluate. Line is. Do you, do you, what, what do you think you need to do to get more depth on the offensive line? I don't think, uh, I don't think there's, 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 there's any more getting more depth, right? I mean, we're we're not. We we have the players we have. We have some guys coming in. We're going to coach them, you know. So um, we're not. We're not. I'm not thinking about anybody other than the guys on our team. Yeah, I think you mentioned earlier this spring. It's a feedback uh, evaluation with the players. Uh, how important is that for both parties? Yeah, sometimes I talk to players, you know, other places, and they say, you know, they've gone. Three or four years, they've never sat down with their coach. Um, you know, we'll do it every, after every season, after every spring. Um, we'll sit down with each player. We'll, we'll talk about, you know, what we say, see in their game. We talk about what their role will be if we play today. We don't predict the future. But we say if we play today, this would be your role. Some of the younger players, we talk about some long-term things in terms of development, and then um, and we talk about their commitment level and uh, off the field stuff. And then, but we ask them to speak their mind and give us give us their part. And so. Uh, that's this week. They'll do it with their position coach and coordinator. They'll all do it with me. And, um, you know, they, uh, they, they all have a right to not only understand where we see it, but a lot of times you sit down with these guys and you say, hey, I see this. And they say, coach, you're missing X, Y, and Z, and they're right. So it should be a dialogue. So I'm excited to do it. Yeah, do the single digit thing at this point, or do you wait until, until no, August? And preseason. Preseason. Just can't believe none of you guys asked me about the kickoff. <laughs> so fired about that kickoff. No one asked me. Never.